Section 7.3, multivariable linear systems. Subgoal in solving three equations, three unknowns, is going to be to reduce the system to two equations, two unknowns. There's two ways that we can go about doing this. One way is through substitution. We would solve an equation for one of the three variables, substitute that into both of the other two equations to reduce it to two equations, two unknowns. A second way, and usually more common, is using elimination with two different pairs of equations and eliminating the same variable to get two equations, two unknowns. Looking at this first system, obviously in this system, our third equation isn't really, is an equation, but not really an equation because we already know what z is equal to. In this situation, we can simply back substitute. If z is equal to 2, plug into the second equation. y plus 3 times 2 equals 5, and finish solving this system, or this equation for y. We get y to be negative 1. Now that we know y and z, we can plug into the top equation and find x. x minus 2 times y, which we now know is negative 1, plus 3 times z, which we knew at the beginning was 2. Solve that equation for x. Subtract the 8 over. We get x to be 1. So our solution is 0 to triple 1 negative 1, 2. <clears throat> Problem 2. This situation. One of our three equations is already written in terms of only x and y. So what I need to do now is get a second equation in terms of only x or y. So I'm going to take the top equation and the bottom equation and since the second one is already written in terms of x and y, I'm going to combine the top equation and bottom equation to again eliminate z so that I have a second equation in terms of just x and y. If I'm going to eliminate z's, that means I need to multiply this top equation by 5. When I do that, I'm going to get 5x minus 10y plus 15z equals 45. Bottom equation, then I'm going to multiply by negative 3. We get negative 6x plus 15y minus 15z equals negative 51. Add those two equations up. We get negative x plus 5y. Z's cancel, which is what we wanted. It's equal to negative 6. And now if I look at what we have, we have it reduced to a situation of two equations, two unknowns. Using this equation and multiplying by negative 1, we're going to get x minus 3y equals 4. And we have that set up now to eliminate the x's. X's drop out, we're left with 2y equals negative 2, so y is negative 1. Now I know y, we can plug back in into either one of those two equations and find x If I use this second equation, we have negative x plus 3 times y equals negative 4. Add the 3 over and divide, we get x to be 1. If I know both x and y, we can plug into either one of the equations now and find z. If I use this bottom equation, 2 times x minus 5 times y plus 5z equals 17. Subtract the 7 over, we get z to be 2, 
So this time we have the order triple one, negative one, and two. Example three. Now in this example, all three equations have all three variables. So you need to simply pick a variable that you are going to eliminate, combine two of the equations, eliminate that same variable twice, that will get you to two equations, two unknowns. Rule of thumb, don't eliminate z's first. And you're going to see why, because when we have a situation when we get infinitely many solutions, you are going to have to find uh, a general solution by letting z equal a. And if you've eliminated z's, now you're going to have to go back and re-eliminate another variable. So as a rule of thumb, eliminate x's or y's when you go to reduce the two equations to unknowns. If I take these top two equations, <clears throat> and we want to eliminate x's, that means the top equation I need to multiply by negative 2. So we're going to get negative 2x plus 6y minus 2z equals negative 2. Second equation, 2x minus y minus 2z equals 2. I don't need to do anything with that. When we add those up, x's are going to be eliminated. I'm left with 5y minus 4z equals 0. <clears throat> now I'm going to take the top and bottom equations. We need to eliminate the same variable. Since we eliminated x, x's the first time, I'm going to eliminate x's again. Actually, let's just take um, let's take the second and third equation. It wouldn't have mattered. I'm just going to use these two, so I'm going to leave the top equation alone. Bottom equation, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. And now we're going to add those two equations up. X's drop out. We have negative 5y plus 4z equals 4. I've created a second equation now in terms of y and z. So if I look at this equation, along with this one that I've created up here, set up very nicely for elimination. Add those together. Y's drop out. Z's drop out. So we're left with nothing. The other side, 4. When variable stuff drops out, and we are left with a false statement, that is when we have no solution. Last example, number four. This one can be somewhat confusing because you look and you see, well, we have two equations that are written only in terms of two variables, which is a good thing, but in this case, it's not the same two variables. The second equation is written in terms of y and z. The third one is written in terms of x and y. Remember, our goal is to get two equations that are written in terms of the same variable. If I look at this second equation, though, it's pretty easy to solve for y. We know that y is equal to z. So now if I make that substitution into this top equation, we get x plus y minus 3y when I put y in in place of z equals negative 1. Simplify that. We get x minus 2y equals negative 1. Now from here, <clears throat> I have a second equation now in terms of x and y. So I can use this bottom equation here that's already in terms of x and y and already set up nicely for elimination. Add up the x is gone. Add up the y is gone. Negative 1 plus 1 is gone. We're left with a true statement. So we know we have infinitely... many solutions. Now for systems of three equations, three unknowns, we are going to find a general solution to give us a better idea of what those infinitely many solutions look like. The way you will always begin that is you're going to let z equal a. So when you have your final ordered triple, your final ordered triple will always be a z coordinate of a. Well, if z is equal to a and we back substitute, we know y and z are equal in this case. 
So y is also going to be a. I take this bottom equation, negative x plus 2 times y, which we now know is a, equals 1. Solve for x. x is 2a minus 1. So there's our ordered triple.